You know, I love this. Audio is 144 years old. Edison invented the phonograph 144 years ago. Recorded music is 144 years old. That's incredible. Analog sound is 144 years old. I mean, so what I'm saying here is, the stuff that I love has been around a really long time. Tube electronics, well, tube electronics came along in the early 1900s. Still here. Analog sound is still here. Horn speakers are still here. Tube electronics are still here. Uh, Emil uh, Berliner invented the flat uh, LP, well, not LP, the flat disc phonograph disc in uh, 1888. That's been around a really long time. So when I pop on a flat record to play it, it's been around for ages. That's incredible. The CD, the digital equivalent, came along 94 years later. <laughs> digital took forever to happen. So th the theme of today's episode is Analog audio, I mean, audio itself, is the journey is filled with zigs and zags. And before we get to all the zigs and zags, uh, at the end of today's episode, I'm going to highlight an audiophiliac viewer's system. This is going to be a recurring theme, a recurring segment in future episodes and in today's episode. At the end of the episode today, I'm going to show you an audiophiliac viewer's system and describe it. So stick around to the end. But back to the long and winding road of audio. So yeah, uh, Thomas Edison got a lot right from the beginning, so much so that it's still here. Isn't it amazing that analog audio, for the most part, is still a viable format, that analog audio uh, is still competitive with the very best of digital audio, even high res digital. When I listen to a well-recorded vinyl record played over a really good turntable with a really good arm and cartridge with a really good phono preamp, and then listen to a state-of-the-art high res digital recording they're not that far apart. Some ways that the analog recording is better than state-of-the-art digital. Thomas Edison's format, the basic idea, holds up. 144-year-old idea, still there, still working, still doing it, still doing okay. Tom, you did good. Incredible. And I can be listening over tube electronics, the L kit. Yeah, that, that thing over there. The Elkit 300B, tube electronics, 19, early 1900s, over 120 year old electronics can still sound really good. Now it's interesting, transistors come along in, you know, for, for, for audio electronics, come along in, what is it, like the late 50s, early 60s, and when transistors come in, People are saying, okay, tubes are out, they're big, they're heavy, they make a lot of heat, they need big transformers, they're expensive, we're done with tubes, they're old hat, transistors are the way forward. And that's the way it looked, like we're done with, with tubes. But then, not that long later, actually by the 70s, it looked like tubes were coming back. What do you research to name one said, no, oh, there's life in those tubes. In that vacuum, <laughs> there's life. They started making tube electronics that people said, these sound good. And here we are <laughs> in the 2020 saying, yeah, a lot of companies, a lot of audiophile companies are making tube electronics that people like. And it's not just audiophiles. And then there's a lot of companies making tube amplifiers for musicians, for guitar players, for example, still digging the sound of tube amplifiers. So it's not just audiophiles. 
and uh, tube compressors for a recording studio. So it's not just audio files. So yeah, tube electronics still hanging in there. Hundred year old technology still going strong. I mean, it's also interesting that the CD, which came out, you know, in 1982 as a viable format, is now not looking so so rosy for its future, right? And that format looks so dominant, it really looked like it was going to kill the vinyl record, right? It looked like, yeah, it's big, it's heavy, it takes up a lot of space, it wears out, it doesn't have a flat frequency response, it has wow and flutter, and it's noisy and scratchy and blah, blah, blah. CD is perfect, the perfect sound forever format. Vinyl is dead. Funny. Now it looks like <laughs> the CD is dead. And now people throw away their CDs. You can't give them away. They, people throw them out into the street. Maybe the vinyl record, Thomas Edison's format sort of kind of, may outlive the shiny new Perfect Sound Forever format. How strange would that be? Now, I still really like CDs. I still buy CDs. I'm not part of that uh, cheering section for the death of CD, not by a long shot. I like CDs. And I like vinyl records. But I'm just saying it's funny how that, that zigzag course of digital is, right? Yeah. CD, CD isn't dead. They're still making pretty much every new piece of music that I'm interested in comes out on CD. So the, the, the CD format isn't dead. But a lot of people are claiming that it's dead or dying, or it smells funny, to use a Frank Zappa phrase. But <clears throat> it ain't healthy, that's for sure, the CD format. Its future is uncertain. But vinyl, on the other hand, mm, looks, looks healthier right now, in 2021. Now, the thing is, uh, streaming, on the other hand, yeah, here we are, and whether you're into Spotify or Cobas or Apple Music or whatever it is, you can hear pretty much anything you want, right? That is amazing. That is amazing to live in this time where instead of being limited to the music that you buy, you can hear anything you want anytime you want it. That, to me, growing up with the, the record collection that I had or the CDs or, that I owned or whatever, to, the ability to hear anything I want anytime I want it, that's a beautiful thing. Now, I'm still coming from the, from the point of view that when I like it, I want to buy it. And I do. I, I tend to buy the things that I really like because that's where I'm coming from. I want to own it. I want to possess it. And I want to support the artists, assuming they're still alive. But the fact that you can hear anything you want on demand, so to speak, is, is a beautiful thing. And the fact that you can sample anything, oh, I heard that this is good or that's good or check that out. Or, I want to hear it. That is incredible that the people can now expand their musical horizons at will without having to spend money to check it out. It's fantastic. I don't know that enough people are actually doing that, that they're just sort of stuck in their, in their groove, so to speak, of just not playing what they know is, you know, it's kind of sad now that it's so easy to just hear anything anytime, like, hey, I never got into opera, here, now you can. You know, I never got into country and western, now you can, whatever. That's, that's one of the best things about being a music lover now, or an audiophile now, is that you can try anything so easily. So it, with zero effort, just do it, right? That's wonderful. So, you know, that's it. This, this has been a long, long, so this has been uh, an incredible journey for all of us. If you're engaged, it's a great time to be an audiophile or a music lover. And now for the audiophiliac viewer system of the day. So here it is. And like I said, this is going to be a recurring segment. So look for it in every episode or nearly every episode. This system comes to us from Brad. He is 36 years old and he only started in this hobby three years ago. His speakers are BMW DM604S2s. The amplifier is an Emotiva XPA2 Gen 2. 
The reel-to-reel -reel is a TIAC A3340S preamp Yamaha CX800U. There's a Nakamichi CR7 cassette, a Nakamichi RX202 Pioneer CTF900 Luxman KX101, a Fluence RT81 table with a Goldring 1006 cartridge, Project Prebox S2 Digital, DBX 400X, a DBX 3BX, a DBX 224X DS, and the racks are VTI, and the pooch's name is Roscoe. Thanks, Brad. Wow, that was pretty cool. And speaking of cool, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And if you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. To do so, super easy. Hit that button right down there. And when you do, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time there's a brilliant new episode, even better than this one. And then even better than that is to check out the Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. To do that, well, check, check the link directly below in the description box. But while you're here, don't go away so fast. Check out uh, the playlist. And there's playlists for uh, speaker reviews headphone reviews, uh, electronics reviews, uh, all kinds of groovy things, even some interviews, uh, rants, just kind of like this one here today in the audiophiliac, um, what do we call these things? Uh, the daily audiophiliac, these are daily. These over, uh, I think, coming up on 1,200 daily audiophiliacs, yikes. Anyway, my work here is at last complete. So thank you again for watching. I really, 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 really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. The car horns are out of control. See you later. Bye.